with your main chip Washington. When it comes to information, the main got an arsenal. Bring you up to speed with what you need. He's a local and nationwide news feed. Let's talk about it. Dialect to do something about it. Chip got the flow wide open if you got questions about it. Man, it's the show that brings you to your raw. To solve all problems, it starts with real talk. It's real talk. And here we go, here we go on this Monday, May 16th, 2022. I just got scolded by my producer, Lola. Uh, this is <laughs> Real Talk Memphis is on the air. Very happy to have you with us uh, if you are with us this evening. I am your humble host, Chip Washington, and uh, we are just thrilled to be here for another day. An absolutely gorgeous day, by the way. Temperatures in the low 80s, an absolutely perfect day. I wish we could take all this equipment, this radio stuff outside, just all this stuff outside and do it outside because the weather is just so nice. I hope you had a chance to get out and enjoy it. It's going to be nice for the next couple of days as well. So did you have a good weekend? I hope you had a good weekend. I know it only lasted about 27 minutes, but, uh, you know, nonetheless, weekend was here. Our Grizzlies went as far as they could go. We cheer them on anyway. We congratulate them for a wonderful season. Uh, and let me tell you something. Everybody in the NBA knows that those boys are for real. And uh, John Morant says he is going to stay in Memphis, and they're going to give him a max deal. And uh, uh, that team is going to make some noise before it's all said and done. So congratulations, Grizzlies. Very proud of you. Very proud of your efforts. And we'll see you again uh, in the next few Months. We have a, a pretty good show for you tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, several uh, items on the agenda, and um, we hope that you uh, participate as you generally do. So how do you participate? Well, uh, there are several ways you can find this wonderful piece of radio broadcasting. Uh, we are on the air live right now on 91.7 WYXR on the FM side. We are also... Uh, on the app, the WYXR app. We are also on TuneIn, T-U-N-E-I-N. Put that in the search and hit play and you'll hear us. We do this little thing called Facebook Live and uh, I'll be posting to YouTube probably tomorrow. And as we are a podcast, after they post the show tomorrow, you can catch us wherever you get your podcast. You guys good? You guys clear? Great. Uh, again, thanks for, uh, for uh, making us a part of your, uh, your Monday evening plans. And, uh, you know, today is uh, a, a special day, and I'll designate that in just a, a moment or two. Uh, but, uh, you know, f- many of us uh, are looking forward to making that, uh, that next trip around the sun, and, uh, a.k.a. birthdays. So a lot of May birthdays to talk about, a lot of May birthdays today. I can't shout you out until I say, Hit it, Lola. Happy birthday. Ah, happy birthday. Happy birthday going out to Secret Lackland. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Heather May. Marcus Rogers celebrating a birthday today, as is Monique Bradley. Risha Faulkner. And this is what makes his birthday special. Uh, on uh, you know this day, about a hundred years ago, <laughs> my brother Michael Anthony Washington was born. Today is my brother Mike's birthday. If you uh, checked out my uh, Facebook page, uh, had a picture of him there, and a lot of folks have been very kind to wish him a happy birthday. He's out in Los Angeles, California. Talked to him earlier today, and. Uh, 
grateful to be here and to have taken another trip around the sun. I is his uh, actual older brother and happy about that as well. Uh, so, uh, Mike, uh, happy birthday, my, my, my dear brother. I love you. And I hope that uh, you will have as many more birthdays as you want to have. That goes out to all of you folks today. Congratulations. And uh, we'll see you again next year. Thanks, Lola. Uh, so in the news and notes, uh, we were talking a few minutes ago, uh, the homegoing ceremony for Bobby O.J. was held this past Saturday at, uh, at, at his church, at his home church, World Overcomers. And it was a very nice ceremony. Of course, uh, you know, just it's just still hard for a lot of us to believe that that voice that we've heard for almost four decades is is silenced now. But uh, it was a very nice uh, send off for him. And and again, as I said last week, I'll say it again this week. You know, may your you know you always be a blessing to each and every one of us from now until. So the conversation once again picks up behind the fact that an 18-year-old boy, uh, teenager, uh, decided uh, that uh, he would drive 200 miles from his home base uh, to Buffalo, New York, to a predominantly black neighborhood, to a supermarket uh, that is frequently frequented by, by most of the people of color. And he walked in with an AR-15 assault rifle and he also had a camera to take pictures of what he was doing. And he walked, he killed, he shot four people in the parking lot before he walked in the store, killed three of those. He walked in the store, uh, the security guard engaged him and actually got off a couple of shots. This kid was wearing body armor uh, and the security guard was killed. All told, there were 13 people shot, 10 of those people were killed, and nine of those people looked like me. Um, this was a hate crime. Uh, it was intentional. Uh, this, uh, this young man uh, posted a 180-page manifesto detailing step-by-step step what he was going to do, how he was going to do it, and why he did it. And um, so, obviously, you know, he's alive now, so there's some accountability for it, but there's no accountability when you look at the fact that uh, there are so many people uh, who were – Minding their own business on a Saturday morning, doing what we all do, walk to go to the store, handle our business, take care of this and that and everything else. So from ages, uh, the youngest was, I think, 32 years old, and the oldest person that was killed was an 86-year-old female. And it, it's just, it's, it's beyond heartbreaking. It, it, it truly is uh, that um, someone uh, this young uh, feels like, uh, you know, the white race is, uh, is diminishing uh, for other races that are taking over, and he decided that he was going to do his own, uh, you know, punishment to take care of that. Uh, apparently, uh, his plans were to continue uh, once he finished at the supermarket, driving down the road and uh, trying to kill as many people as he could. That was also part of his manifesto. Uh, I'm not going to say his name. Of course, he's been charged with, you know, he'll never get out of jail again. He clearly has no remorse for what he did because it was intentional. It was purposeful. And no one can tell me that there is no hate in this country. No one can tell me that we are as divided today as we were 40, 50 years ago because it seems like it's getting worse. We're seeing more of these groups cropping up all over the United States and more of the propaganda, more of the, 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 the gossip, more of the nonsense. Social media perpetuates all of this on a daily basis. You can go to the Internet and you can go to some of these sites and you can get any piece of information you want to, whether it's truth or whether it's garbage, and then you can go out and, and take action. We hear the same conversations we do every time a mass shooting or killing occurs. Well, we need to do more to regulate the guns. We need to do more to, to, to stiffen gun laws. This is the state that we live in, Tennessee, that decided at the legislature to say that if you are 21 years old, you know, you can carry a, a gun without, it doesn't have to be concealed. You don't have to have a license. You don't have to have a background check or anything. You can carry a weapon with no problem whatsoever. And then we had another legislator in the Tennessee House who decided hey, 21 was too old. Let's drop it down to 18 years old. Let's give them the rights. And his rationale was, 
Well, if they could go to war, they should be able to carry. You know, this is. I mean, this is stupid on levels that I I just don't even you know quite understand, and I never will. So what what you know what has to happen? I don't know what has to happen. I really don't, and I don't know what's going to stop all of this because. We are very polarized and we are very divided in this country. I'm going to continue to pray to my God that one day he's going to put a stop to all of this and maybe we can move forward. Who knows? Uh, Now, this was on Saturday. On yesterday, there was another shooting where a man walked into a church, 68 years old, this guy. Uh, He was uh, uh, Asian and he walked into a church that uh, had a prim- uh, it was a majority Taiwanese, and this was a hate crime too. Uh, he he shot five people, he killed one, and I mean all these folks were doing was they were getting together for lunch uh, in the sanctuary after the service was over. It's you know, and, and it makes you throw your hands up and just say what the what truly. We were talking about uh, the inflation issue that is going on out here. Everything, everything, everything is high. I went to a gas station. I passed the gas station two days ago. It was $3.99. I passed by it today. It was $4.10 a gallon. Here we it just it just continues to go up. You can't find things in grocery stores, and the things you do find in grocery stores, you have to take out a second mortgage to buy because everything is so high. Baby formula, you can't find. I heard this afternoon that one of the companies that manufactures baby formula nationally uh, uh, is going to start uh, manufacturing them again. And maybe in a couple of weeks, we should see uh, baby formula uh, once again on the shelves. It's just it's just amazing. You know what what is going on out here? The president now has some of the lowest approval ratings, you know, on record. Uh, these days, and especially when it comes to the economy. Nobody thinks he's doing a good job with the economy. Um, And, you know, we see the results of all of this, you know, each and every day. Um, But this gas thing and and these supply chain issues and these groceries, I mean, where does it end? Just where does it end? I don't know. Um, Switching gears, and we were talking about it, you know, my crew and I a minute ago, uh, we was, there was a celebration uh, that was a pretty grim one. There were a million people in this country since March of 2020 uh, died of COVID, uh, COVID, COVID-related uh, illnesses, and that is a that just that's just a mind-boggling thought to even have. But yet there are still folks out there who haven't gotten vaccinated, not one shot. I got my second booster this weekend, and uh, you know, and I know people are saying. Ah, you know, people are still getting COVID. You know, regardless, they get you get 27 shots and then you still get COVID. Well, you know, it, it is to sort of lessen the uh, the uh, the the rationale of the illness that you get. Um, that's what these shots are supposed to be for. Lola said a little while ago, it's not they said you wouldn't necessarily get COVID, but it would lessen the symptoms if you took the if you took the vaccine and you wouldn't be as sick. You may not have to go to the hospital, and then we may not have to have a, a, a sad ending to, to your story. So, you know, uh, everybody has their own thoughts and opinions about things. You do you. I will continue to tell you if you don't have a, a vaccination, if you didn't get a vaccination, you should get one. And you should also get a booster. So, you know, but people make up their own minds and they make their own decisions. This weekend was the World Championship Barbecue Cooking Contest. And uh, it went off uh, flawlessly without a hitch. I think there was a little rain on Saturday evening. Delayed things for about an hour. But those folks were so lit up down there, it didn't, it, it didn't even matter. Uh, but I uh, heard that uh, it was a really good time. And uh, the grand prize winners, uh, the grand champion was Blues Hog. There are people that come from all over the country here on this particular week to be a part of this contest because this is the granddaddy of the barbecue cooking contest around the country. And that trophy, having that trophy and saying that you're the best and you're the grand champion goes a long, long way. Mentioned it earlier, the Grizzlies uh, season that came to an end on Friday night uh, in uh, Golden State. That was a heck of a series. And uh, as I said uh, before, the Grizzlies showed the world how good they are. And uh, with a healthy squad next year and a healthy job and everything else, they'll be right back in the playoffs. So the league better be worried. That's all I have to say. Congratulations, Grizz, on an absolutely amazing season. We love you. We appreciate you so much. 
And before I go always uh, into the first break, I always tell folks that there is a war going on. It's an active war going on between Russia and Ukraine. And uh, we need to continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, pray for their health, their strength, and their safety, and for the ones who have perished their souls as well. I'm going to take my uh, first break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to the executive director of an organization that really caters to the whole person, the whole community, and everything else that goes along with it. And we're going to talk about a very important partnership uh, that they have entered into with MATA. Uh, This is Real Talk Memphis. I am Chip. Very happy to have you with us. We're going to take a quick break. Don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Support for WYXR comes from Focal Point. Located in Crosstown Concourse, Focal Point is a Southern College of Optometry clinical facility that offers exclusive designer eyewear lines and eco-friendly frames, which meets the needs of patients who value style, customized fits, and a personalized approach to their eyes. Learn more at focalpointcrosstown.com. They don't know. The Orpheum Theater Group presents Mending Hearts Camp, July 11th through July 26th. Mending Hearts is a performing arts day camp for young people who have experienced the death of one or both parents. Surrounded by a community of peers who have experienced a similar loss, campers explore their creativity through a variety of performing arts and community building activities. Information at orpheum-memphis.com slash Mending Hearts. Music meets you wherever you are. A great record finds you, and the trick it pulls off is that it records you. The music always remembers who you were when it first hit you, and for the rest of your natural born life, wherever you go, music can take you back to whoever you were. At Loaded for Bear, the way we approach art and brand design is to find our clients wherever they really are, meet them there, and create lasting work that captures who they are. Just like y'all, we're from Memphis, and we're listeners. Loaded for Bear is proud to ride for WYXR, and community radio anywhere. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this beautiful Monday evening. Chip Washington with you. And uh, I'm very happy to have my first guest. You know, we try to focus on positive folks doing positive things and trying to help to uplift our community. And uh, my first guest is someone who fits that description perfectly. She is the executive director and co-founder of Whole Child Strategies and She is Natalie McKinney. And Natalie, thank you so much for coming on Real Talk. I appreciate you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for the... Absolutely. Your audio is a little little choppy there. Hopefully, you know, we can can, can level that out just a little bit. But are you okay? I mean, can you... I'm trying to hear you. Uh, your, Your audio sounds a little distorted, I think. Can you hear me okay? Oh, she's frozen now. The shot now the shot is frozen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey Natalie, you there? I think the problem Oh. Yeah. Uh, if I turn off the art, is that better? Can you hear me? Yes, I I got you. I got you. I got you better now. I do. 
Okay, I have to turn my video off. Okay, uh, that's fine. That's okay. That's all right. Okay. Uh, so listen, okay. again, thank you for coming on the show. And the reason why I, I reached out to you is because uh, I, I, I I learned, obviously, a lot about your organization. But I wanted to talk a little bit about a partnership that you have with MATA, uh, which is which deals with a very serious issue of food deserts and, and really uh, food insecurities and providing a, a connection point uh, between folks in need and folks who have from a transportation level. Tell us a little bit about, well, first of all, I want you to tell, tell our listeners about Whole Child uh, Strategies and what it is you all do. Thank you. Yes. So um, we started back in 2017 on the, on, the, on the concept of we've got to deal with making sure the kids can get to school every day engaged and ready to learn. Right. So we've got to deal with those barriers that are outside the school building that are hindering that. Mm-hmm. So what we intend to do is that we want to make sure that all families in Klondike and Smoky City are politicalized. And the way we do that is we talk to them to tell us what their needs are and what their solutions are to these problems. And MATA, the MATA um, partnership is one of the examples of us doing just that. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, the MATA partnership came from, it stemmed from the community identifying transportation initially uh, before the pandemic as an issue. Mm-hmm. After the, um, during the pandemic, the community indicated that not only transportation was a problem, but access to good quality food was a problem. Mm-hmm and getting to that good quality food. So based on listening to them, we came up with um, the idea with our our neighborhood champions and the staff to reach out to MATA to talk about a partnership of getting families to fresh food by taking them every Saturday to the farmer's market, downtown farmer's market, right. and then getting them to a grocery store um, because since we started this, the only grocery store within it, within that community was, was closed. Mm-hmm. So we took them to um, cash to get some other um, dry food. That's how it started, by listening and then um, helping people to mobilize and organize around coming up with a solution. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Natalie McKinney. She is the executive director and co-founder of Whole Town Strategies. And uh, this partnership with uh, with MATA, now you say you do it, uh, you know, on Saturdays. And for the people that live in the areas of Klondike and Smoky City, I think you referenced, um, and and they they closed the store in that town. So they really had no, you know, no food. food. So um, how how receptive was MATA? Uh, to to this idea when you, I guess, when you approach them about, you know, we need to do something about, you know, for these folks out here. Extremely re- um, receptive. MATA um, and their leadership have been very, very um, engaged in thinking differently about how we um, provide access. Right. And this is one of those, those um, partnerships that they said we worked out a solution together with the community. And um, it's not, it's much like the, I think it's um, Groove on Demand or Move um, that they do in Boxtown and yeah. that partnership. Mm. Well, this is a little different. Um, this is about getting people um, to where they need to go for a very pre- uh, specific reason. Matter, um, when people said, well, when the, the downtown market is um, closed, we want to go to Walmart because we can get everything there. Yeah. And and so Matt said, okay, we'll take you to, to Walmart. Mm-hmm. Well, we go ahead. Go ahead, Natalie. Have, it's been very, very, and um, it's it's a way of us making sure the community can access what they need. Wow. Um, this is, uh, you know, and this is the kind of program that we so desperately need in this town. Uh, talk to me about some of the other programs that, uh, that, that are important to you and your organization that you're trying to do to, to uh, make folks and communities whole again. 
Natalie, are you there? So I want to, I'm here. Can you hear me? I got you now. Yeah. Okay. I want to make sure everyone understands that it's not anything that we do. We help to mobilize what the community says they want. To. Right. Right. So um, the thing we're trying to get away from is programs. We're trying to, we're trying to um, shift systems by actually allocating public resources to where they are needed. Right. And they're, mm-hmm. yeah, they're needed where people say they need them. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so um, one of the things that we're trying to do in shifting how we think about um, building a budget, a, a county budget, uh, we worked with the Moral Budget Coalition to get a resolution passed by the county commission that is now, we're now um, trying to codify community centered participatory budget. Mm-hmm. So that's where people can say, we think we should fund X, Y, and Z. So this is the kind of work that our organization is doing. And while it may look like programs, it's really designed to get people to think differently on how to allocate resources. So you're, you're basically the goal between, as you said, between the community and their mm-hmm. needs and folks who can help maybe from the, from the governmental end or the financial wow. end to be able to help, right? Yes, absolutely. To pull all that together. Yes, we're the intermediary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, is is uh, you getting cooperation from uh, the uh, city and the county governments? We're getting cooperation from the county. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know that it's, it's it's better to have one than than none at all. You know, and and, and that's and that's a, right. You know, right. so you know, so 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 basically, it is. It's like you, you're giving people, it, it sounds like, a voice. Uh, do you have a lot of community partners that help you in your efforts on a daily basis? Yeah, we have, um, we have a, ma- a major community partner because one of the things we're trying to do as well is to build capacity within the community so that it can sustain their change, the changes that they, they help to implement, right? Okay. okay. So one of our great community partners is Cathedral of Faith. Okay. Which has been in the community for about 17 years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, they help to um, people who are live in a community and people whose children go to the schools in that community. Yeah. They help with basic needs if they have basic needs mm-hmm. and try to put them on the path of thriving as opposed to survive wow that's now that that last part so um that's a great partner that we have we have a partner um city year is another that's a partner that we have in the school Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. Well, I take, ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I'm just going to I'm just I was sitting here thinking about what you were saying. And, uh, you know, it all makes perfect sense to me. But folks, you know, have a lot of needs uh, in the city of Memphis and the county of Shelby. And, uh, you know, we thank God for organizations like you who are trying to be the conduit uh, between their voices and the people who can make make change happen. And so. I want to thank you for taking a few minutes out of your time to come on Real Talk Memphis tonight. And if people want to know more information about what it is you do and the Matter Partnership, can you give us some contact information before you go? Absolutely. Please look at our website at www.wcstrategies.org. Okay. Well, very good. Well, very good, Natalie. Thank you so much again for coming on Real Talk. I really appreciate it. And um, I, I'm just uh, and, and, and thank you for the work that you're doing. And if there's some initiatives down the road that uh, we need to talk about, you're always welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, these are the kind of uh, programmatics, uh, whole child strategies uh, and groups like them. Uh, who are giving people in, the, in these the communities in these, uh, uh, you know, more impoverished uh, communities uh, a voice and saying they're saying this is what we need. You know, can you help us get it? And uh, through that, a partnership with Matter was formed. And uh, it sounds like things are going very, very well. So we thank you for coming on the show. We're going to take our next break. And when we come back, uh, we're going to shift gears and talk a little bit more about what I talked about earlier about the 18-year-old teenager, the madman, 
who went on a uh, killing rampage this weekend with someone who knows a little bit about law enforcement and security. Uh, and we're going to have a frank conversation about that. This is Real Talk Memphis. I am Chip. We'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. The Halloran Center for Performing Arts and Education, next door to the Orpheum, invites you to be the center of it all through live entertainment, arts education, community programs, and event spaces all year round. For more information, visit orpheum-memphis.com. Support for WYXR comes from the Orpheum Theater on Main Street in downtown Memphis. Live Nation presents Rainbow Kitten Surprise Thursday night, December 8th at 8 p.m. Tickets are on sale now for Rainbow Kitten Surprise at LiveNation.com. This is Will Goodwin, co-founder at Crosstown Brewing Company. Just like WYXR, Crosstown Brewing supports Memphis music and our neighbors who use their talents to make it. Our beers can be found at our 3,000 square foot tap room right here at the Crosstown Concourse and at your favorite bars, restaurants, and stores throughout Tennessee, Mississippi, and Eastern Arkansas. Enjoy. Support for WYXR, including our 2022 stereo sessions, comes from Archer Malmo, a Memphis-based marketing, digital, PR, and branding agency. Archer Malmo believes the greatest asset of any creative entity is its people and proudly supports WYXR for lifting up Memphis voices for the world to hear. More at ArcherMalmo.com. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. Hey, welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday evening. Chip Washington with you, your humble host, uh, happy to have you along for the ride and happy to have my next guest, the man that I have known for 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 quite a few years. He is a like I said before, a man in the streets, a man who's been in the community, who knows the community, who understands our people. He's retired law enforcement. Uh, now he has his own security business. And we're going to talk about some of the nonsense that's going on out here, not only in our streets, but all across this country. Uh, Please to welcome Benny Cobb to the program. Benny, thanks again for coming on Real Talk. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Hey, Chip, it's, 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 it's my honor. It's, it's good talking with you. I hadn't seen your face and talked with you in a while, but I, I follow you and uh, you're doing good things. You're bringing information to the community. And so I'm honored to be a part of this, uh, this today. Thank you so much. So, you know, Benny, obviously, you know, we've been talking about, you know, what happened over the weekend uh, when an 18-year-old teenager decided that, uh, you know, there were too many black folks running around. So he figured he'd take his, uh, he'd take his uh, mantle and uh, take care of that problem. 200 miles away from where he was living, he drove to that neighborhood, he drove to that community, he knew what he was doing, and he killed 10 people, and all of them looked like you and I. First of all, what is your take on that particular situation? Well, now, I, I need to listen to the audience to remember the names. The young man that uh, just committed this atro- these atrocious acts over the weekend, Dylan Roof, Kyle Rittenhouse. These are people that we need to have in our minds It's going to be household names because this is, Chip, this is not going to be an isolated incident. Uh, violence is um, is becoming more and more uh, prevalent. 
But extremism is also um, a, a big factor. When we talk about this, we're talking about homegrown terrorism. Yes. Is, that's exactly what it is. You have to call it what it is. Mm-hmm. And and so I, I know in our in our community we have this 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 cry about black on black crime. And I I don't want to see not one black person uh, injured or killed. Don't want to see a person injured or killed without regardless of the color. But the reality of it is, is these homegrown extremists they're taking out multiple people at one time. And in the, the communities, we're not looking at the signs. The law enforcement had a um, had, had this guy on, the, on their watch list. Uh, he had threatened to shoot shoot up a school. His school, uh, right? Recently. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so he was able to to sidestep that watch list and go out and, and, and shoot thirteen people and kill ten other. So there there is a concentrated effort to eliminate, to assault, to attack uh, minority people based on the fact that there's a, a genuine fear from other populations and other 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 uh, species of mankind that minorities may be taken over. Now, having said that, where do we go from here? Well, certainly law enforcement across the nation need to be on high alert. We had a shooting at the church uh, where in California. Orange County, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Then we yeah. had a shooting in Houston. I don't know if you know about that. Yeah, at, at a, it was a mall, right? Was it a mall? At, at a mall. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so when these things happen, they come in waves. And with the pandemic easing up or people feel like it's easing up and people getting out being more mobile now, there are going to be more people out. And there's going to be more and more opportunities for these people to prey on innocent people. Now, people say, Chip, and, and I, I don't want you to get any backlash about this, but this is just my opinion. We're talking about gun control and controlling the guns and getting the guns off the street. Well, that's never going to happen. Right, right. Because right. a gun by itself don't do anything. So what we have to do is we have to concentrate on the man behind the gun. Yes, there needs to be stricter gun laws, uh, stricter background checks. 18 years old, an uh, 18-year-old has committed mass murder. Takes me back to Dylan Roof, yeah, uh, and, and, and mm-hmm. Kyle Rittinghouse. Mm-hmm. And so these are pe- these are young people that has have this kind of hatred in their heart and in their mind. And so we we can expect to be in for a long hot summer. Uh, just joining us, we're speaking with Benny Cobb, uh, law enforcement veteran, uh, security uh, owner. Uh, he, he he knows the streets and he knows what he's talking about. But I guess, Benny, for, for me, uh, the simple question is, and it's not so simple, um, because a lot of folks are pointing to it the day after. What role do you think social media in and of itself plays in, in, in the wickedness that we see on a daily basis, it seems? Well, I, I don't. I don't really believe social media plays a big part in it. You have to have a man with a with a wicked heart, a depraved heart, in order to just go out and assassinate people mm-hmm. because of the color of their skin or because they feel like they have been disrespected. And so, social media uh, is is a uh, it's a big thing right now. But you and I, we 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 do social media. Of course, I do media, and you do media. And I've never thought about going out and killing anybody. So I think it's a person's depraved heart and depraved mind that, that that's a result of that. What is, what is, if any, a detriment to people uh, to be able to commit these type of heinous crimes? So we don't have to sit back, you know, the day after and and mourn uh, lives lost. In particular, as you use the term depraved heart, this is a this is a white young man who, for some particular reason. Uh, thought that the black folks were the enemy and that he would try to take care of that problem by eliminating them. Is there a detriment at all for people who commit these type of crimes or to keep them from even thinking about doing these kind of things? Well, Chip, more than that, what, I, what I've heard in the communities and what I've had conversations with people about, of course, we didn't mention that I teach, uh, I also instruct at a couple of uh, local colleges. Mm-hmm. And so what I've heard, had the conversation uh, with some of my students about the this disgust and amazement that you have these these young white uh, Caucasian young men that that continue committing these crimes, and then they're being talked down by law enforcement. They're being uh, taken to the hamburger joint, getting the hamburger before they're taken to jail. Mm. And uh, my students are saying, "Well, 
you know, unarmed black men and unarmed black and brown people being being killed uh, by law enforcement. So the, the the disgust comes from the uh, the the apparent or the the uh, disparity in the way that these crimes are being dealt with. What is, in your opinion, uh, what is or what are race relations like in this country? I, I say they're just as bad as they've ever been. There's a lot of hate in this country. There's a lot of separate uh, separation in this country. You know, what, what, what is your take on that? So it, it's, it's as bad as it's ever been, but it's more masks now. More people are not wearing, they're not wearing who is wearing masks, and these people that are, uh, are part of the hate groups. So they're our neighbors, they're our doctors, they're our attorneys, they're our police officers. These are people that we're dealing with on a daily basis mm -hmm. that we don't know who they are and what we're dealing with because of the mask they wear. Now, the uh, the other part to that is the the, 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 the assumption of the, the um, uh, appearance that African-Americans or black and brown people are uh, being targeted or being uh, treated unfairly because of the, let's say, for example, the Kyle Rittenhouse sentence mm -hmm. uh, verdict, rather. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, um, uh, Dallin Roof, now, African-American people, for the most part, are known as being kind-hearted. There's no way in my church that Dylan Roof would have set up in there for two hours without somebody saying something to him. But we, we in, in African-American church, we welcome everybody. We want to show everybody love. Um, but the mask uh, that the people are wearing now, not hoods, but mask, uh, it's, it's your next door neighbor, it's your, it's your the, the grocery store owner, the, the mall owner, your attorney. And these are the people that uh, when they when they snap is uh, detrimental to, to the, uh, and, and, and also surprising to the mainstream people. It is uh, a, a, a continual conversation that we have over and over and over again and that we don't see any solutions to these problems. Uh, the mindsets are, are getting more disturbed, as you say. And I, and I don't know, I, I, I don't know what what's going to happen next. But you said something earlier. It's almost like waiting for the next shoe to drop. And, and, and it's it's going. It's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's when, when sure. and it's going to happen more uh, sooner than we actually believe that uh, the mainstream. We walk around and we're so. We're so happy to be free, uh, be able to go out of the house and go to the malls and go to the movies. And a lot of times, um, it, we as human, we don't we don't look over our shoulders and we don't believe that bad things will happen. We be, believe bad things happen to other people. Mm -hmm. So as a certified trainer, which I am, I train, uh, I do own a security company, but I do more training in self defense and and uh, firearms right. and, and and situational awareness. Mm -hmm. Is that is that person that does that? I want to caution the, your listening audience that the day is coming where you may have to defend yourself. James Coney, the former director of, of the FBI, said, it is not the police job to protect you. He said that in an open statement and a press conference, and he's absolutely right. The police right now are responding after the fact. Mm -hmm. So I would caution everybody uh, that's listening to be on alert, to keep your head on swivel, as we say and to uh, be, be prepared to defend yourself and your family. Benny Cobb, uh, it has, uh, it's really been eye-opening uh, what we've seen recently, and I really respected you. I really respect you, and I really respect you for your, your career, for your passion, and you're also a mentor to a whole lot of young folks out here. And uh, I really appreciate you taking some time to come on this show and really – giving us some truth about what's going on because people need to hear and understand the truth. And, uh, you know, if you don't mind, I'm going to tap on you from time to time to come back and, uh, you know, when things start to happen, you know, maybe give us some more, uh, break down some real realizations that we all need to face. And I thank you for coming on the show tonight. Absolutely. One one last point I want to say, Chip, before yes, I go. Yes, sir. Um, uh, of course, I say, as, as I mentioned, I'm a uh, certified trainer, mm -hmm. uh, law enforcement firearms training. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that has, has really uh, mesmerized me and hurt my heart is a, a father, grandfather, and a uh, uncle, uncle to a lot of nieces and nephews is the amount of young people, children that's being killed either accidentally or in violence. Yes, sir. So this Sunday, we're having a, a free gun safety 
class training for for young people six to sixteen. Okay. And it's absolutely free. So if anybody's interested in signing up, they can contact me at nine zero one six four nine eight five three nine. Absolutely free. We want to put this in your in the young people mind that these guns are dangerous, and we want to take them out of their hands and and, and, and attempt to keep another child from getting hurt. Amen to that. Benny Cobb, thanks for coming on, man. And we'll talk soon. I appreciate you. All right, Chip. All right, take care. All right, bye-bye. Well, that was, uh, that was sobering. But that, that is the truth uh, as, uh, as uh, we live it and we see it uh, each and every day. Uh, thank Benny for coming on and, and sharing some of his uh, knowledge and wisdom with us. We're going to take uh, one final break. And when we come back, we're going to shift gears all together. We're going to talk uh, to a young lady uh, who has about 14 jobs, but she still had time enough to focus on a very special event that she hosted recently. This is Real Talk Memphis. We'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Orion believes communities work best when they work together. They have been a trusted financial partner in our community for more than 60 years and are committed to giving back in the neighborhoods they serve. You can see how they're redefining banking at orionfcu.com. Support for WYXR comes from Focal Point. Located in Crosstown Concourse, Focal Point is a Southern College of Optometry clinical facility that offers exclusive designer eyewear lines and eco-friendly frames, which meets the needs of patients who value style, customized fits, and a personalized approach to their eyes. Learn more at focalpointcrosstown.com. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. Okay, welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on uh, this Monday evening. And my next guest, I said it before we went to break, she has about a hundred different uh, uh, jobs and things that she does. And she's a she's a she's a mom. She is uh, uh, the owner of the Comedy Junt here in town. Uh, she she also works a, a full time job, and uh, she also but she also took the time to uh, create and put together a little special event for some folks um, who may not necessarily get the recognition uh, that they deserve. Uh, please welcome uh, Latoya, Ten- how do you, spell it, you pronounce your last name? Is it Tenille? Latoya Tenille. It's La- actually my middle name, Latoya Tenille. Latoya Tenille. Well, we welcome you to Real yes. Talk Memphis. Thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. You listen, you had us dying uh, going to commercial break about, you know, your <laughs> your hair and the whole nine yards. We were just... We- I was in the house. I was like, I can't find my wig. And I got in the car. My wig was in my back seat. I was like, yes, I can find my wig. All right. It was in my back seat. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we're glad you found the wig and the wig found you. Oh, by the way, yeah. if I didn't mention that she's also a comedian. <laughs> in case yeah. you guys didn't know that as well. You uh, got to make sure you have at least two car wigs in the car. Uh, two car wigs. You got to have two. That's it. That's the rule. Two car wigs in the car. My produ- my producers are just falling out <laughs> in here. So listen, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, the event that you hosted uh, for uh, young folks with autism. And uh, you don't mind me saying that includes your son. Your, your son is, is autistic, is he not? My son is autistic. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, 
my son is autistic. He has what they call Asperger's syndrome, which just means he's 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 high functioning. Uh-huh. So his disability his disability is more behavioral and mental versus physical. Okay, so you decided, and I'm I'm really interested in in, in how you decided uh, to put this together. Talk to us about the uh, the fashion event that you had uh, the, for these uh, very special young uh, young boys and girls out there. Cool. So, like I, like you were saying, my son is autistic, and I'm always looking for ways to raise awareness about autism. My son was diagnosed when he was in the fifth grade, mm-hmm. so of course my world instantly got changed. And what I learned as I go through the process of living with him, the people are not aware of what autism is. Right. Mm-hmm. And specifically to understand it's different in every person. And also, Caleb is high functioning. So, since Caleb is high functioning, his disability, his disability is not always seen because it's not physical. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I, I love my son, of course, because he's mine and I get, you know, income tax for him every year. <laughs> okay. And I'm pretty sure it's other parents that love theirs as well. So, I was like, okay, what better way to showcase? the broad range of the spectrum of children of autism by, by doing a fashion show. Now I've done, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no stranger to events, but I've never done a fashion show. Now, the re- why a fashion show? Yeah. I'm going to tell you why I decided to do a fashion show. Well, my daughter is a seamstress. Okay. She's a seamstress. Okay. And she's into fashion and stuff like that. And so my son actually graduates uh, high school next Monday and we've been trying to figure out what comes next for him. Right. So he really doesn't know what he want to do. Mm-hmm. And so my daughter is start throwing out ideas like, you know, one day she says, you know what? You have great bone structure. You should be a model. Mm-hmm. And so he asked his sister, he said, well, do I have to go to school to be a model? And she was like, no, nah. he's okay. I want to be a model because <laughs> he don't have to go to school, or you know, he don't have to just show up and walk. She said, "Yeah, I do is show up, walk, and wear clothes." Uh-huh. Okay. And that's where it actually, it's actually where the idea came from to do a fashion show, and and I let him a model. Now, what I was not expecting was when I first okay, when I first had the idea, I ran across one of my friends. Mm-hmm. To kind of see, okay, what you think about this? And she thought it was a great idea. Yeah. I was not expecting so many parents to be so excited about it and so interested in it. Like I had people even from out of town saying, God, I wish my child could participate, but we don't have this in our city. How many how many kids how many kids were in the fashion show? It, 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 I had I had about sixty five parents interested and sent and oh, wow. I sent out emails. Mm-hmm. I end up with about twelve kids. Yeah, I, I end up with um with, with twelve kids. Mm-hmm. It looked like it was a. It looked like it was fun from what I what I saw. Little, little highlights yeah. of it on the news. It looked like everybody had a good time. And you know, you talked about it. The self esteem um, is really in situations like this is really important. Is it? Now, talk a little bit about that part of it. What I can tell you about is each child. Because keep in mind, these kids are autistic. Right. So in most cases, they can't participate. And stuff like that. People don't want to be bothered with them, mm. or they don't know how to be. They don't know how to deal with them. Mm. It's a lot that goes into dealing with children with autism. I, I, I can recall sometimes being in rehearsal, and a child may start making clicking noises or flapping, and the parent would go. The parent would try to like stop them. Like, you don't have to do that here. Mm-hmm. Like. We're all, we're, we know what that's like. So when I see a child making, you know, what someone would say weird noises, it's my norm. So I don't look back or like, oh, you know, so that, that was the one thing to be, in a, to be in a space where you don't have to try to quiet your child mm-hmm. or, or try to make them not be what they are. And so when they got a chance to model, the smiles on their faces yeah. and how yeah. they got to walking down and seeing and, and seeing people cheer for them. Just having a wonderful it just time. Was like, yeah, man, yeah. it was so great. It was so good. That that's an amazing thing. So, is this something you think you might want to make an annual event? Oh, I'm definitely gonna make it annual. Okay. I'm definitely going to make it annual. Um, because not only did did, did I get good good feedback from uh, parents and the, and the participants. The people that came to see it, like, there was one little girl who really, by the by the second time she came out, people were, like, in tears. Because I had one baby um, in the fashion show, and she can't deal with noise. Mm-hmm. So, literally, when she came out, 
she would put her fingers in her ears. Mm -hmm. So we had to lower the music all the way down for her. Right. And when people wanted to cheer for her, they couldn't cheer for her loud. They had to do spirit fingers. Spirit fingers, right, exactly. Yeah. Spirit fingers mm -hmm. instead of cheering loud. Mm -hmm. So when she came out, I had I had puzzle pieces taped to the floor to show you where to stop it. So when she came out, uh, her aunt had to walk with her. But she came out, and she had her fingers in her ear. But when she got to the puzzle piece, she would stop and pose. Mm. Oh, that's and so she cute. walked to the next piece. And she would stop and pose. That's so cute. All the while with her fingers in her ear and everybody in the room is just like That's what that that's a, Yeah, yeah. That that went, really, that right there, that right there, that that right there is an example of what makes it all worth it. It really, really does. Right. So yeah. so so listen, I gotta get out of here. I I, I, I really I, I really am so happy that you came on the show. Quickly uh, you have a, a, a business. You have a, a comedy club. Give us uh, yes. the who, what, the who, what, where. If they want to come check out some uh, local talent, where do they go? Great. I'll take us all. Okay, it's, it's, it's called the Comedy Junk. It's located at 4330 American Way, Suite 101. You can find us on Facebook under the Comedy Junk, Instagram, the Comedy Junk. You can um you can go to I'm on TikTok I'm trying I'm, I'm old so I'm trying to figure out how to work TikTok but we're on TikTok now okay um and the website is www.thecountyjoint.com um I have Monday night karaoke I have Tuesday night conversation Wednesday night uh, a variety show Thursday night karaoke oh. Fridays and Saturdays are comedy um I do comedy classes comedy camps um do you wanna you want a rental space. Hit me up. You can rent. You can rent the space. I love it. And yeah, I do comedy as well. So book me. Book me for your your event. You, you do the host or whatever. Hey, holla at me. You you got it going. You got it going on. And 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 before I let you before I let you go, everybody uh, who is listening to this or or watching on our Facebook live, you have to have two wigs in the car. Two wigs, correct? Look at her. She's two. That's it. Two wigs. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Latoya Tanil, thank you so much for coming on the show, and really, thank you for it, re me. it really, uh, in giving us a very uplifting way to end this broadcast. I appreciate you so much. You have a good night. Okay, take care. You too. Okay, right, bye, bye bye. <laughs> well, that was a really, really great way to end the show, and uh, you got us all in here laughing. You know, it's been a long day. Folks work all day long, and and you know, it, 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 I appreciate the ones that you know, give us a few minutes from 6 to 7 p.m. on Monday evening and, and it's very nice to have uh, you know, folks like uh, Latoya, um, who is, is funny in her own right, but she has a heart of gold and for these young folks uh, who are artistic, uh, she's letting them know that they're special in their own way too so as Lola plays me out I uh, just wanted to say thank you to all my guests uh, this evening uh, Natalie McKinney, Benny Cobb, and of course Latoya Tennille. And I want to thank you all. Uh, I don't know if, if you guys took the night off or not um, in, in the Facebook Live, but I do see Sarah Gum and I do see Tessa Graham watching me. Uh, but in it doesn't really matter because I'm just privileged to be able to sit behind this mic each and every week and hopefully provide some type of information that uh, you would like or you know you didn't know or maybe that you would need. So. Um, for all of us here at uh, Real Talk Memphis, thank you for uh, joining us tonight. And if the Lord says so, I'll be back here the same time, the same chair, the same radio station. And we'll try to do it all over again, maybe just a little bit better. So in the meantime, man, between time, I'm Chip. And I'm out. Have a great week. <laughs>